Operation Confidence proudly presents America's Invisible Heroes Talk Radio Show. Tune in weekly on Sundays from 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Pacific Time with your host, Consuelo Mackey, co-host, Air Force veteran, Matt Davidson, announcers, Taylor Marcella and Brooke Gadesi, U.S. Army veteran and entertainment segment host, Charles Whitehead. U.S. Army Veteran and Strategies for Hope segment host, Dr. Kathy Cash. U.S. Army Veteran and Lifeline for Women Veterans segment host, Martha Elena Varela. National Director of Faith Services, Chaplain and Veterans and Recovery segment host, Anthony Akinfora. And U.S. Air Force Veteran and Incarcerated to Success segment host, Kevin Lewandowski. For more information or to be a guest on our show, email info at operationconfidence.org. <coughs> Operation Confidence, America's Invisible Hero. Operation Confidence is a grassroots nonprofit. The organization's mission is to provide stable housing for veterans who have experienced homelessness, as well as providing a wide range of supportive services. To help accomplish our goal, a successful landowner has donated land for the project, a world-renowned architect has offered to design the houses, and construction classes from the local community colleges will take part in building the houses. Your support and donations are needed. To get involved, please visit our website at www.operationconfidence.org or email in at operationconfidence.com. Okay, well, welcome everyone, and thank you for tuning in to America's Invisible Heroes, a show dedicated to our veterans and their families. Yes, I'm your host, Consuela Mackey, Executive Director of a grassroots nonprofit organization called Operation Confidence. No, I'm not a veteran. But my heart goes out to our American heroes, especially those who are disabled and may have experienced homelessness. For those who are new to the show, American Invisible Heroes was established to provide a platform for our veterans to be able to share their experiences, heartfelt stories, resources, and challenges. Now, board member Taylor Marcellus will present our co-host for today. Take it away, uh, Taylor, Taylor, baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have Army Reserve Veteran Charles Whitehead, who is a board member um, and segment host on the entertainment side. And then we have U.S. Navy Veteran Calvin Poole and his monthly segment, Blinded Veterans Helping Blinded Vet Veterans. Okay. Well, so we're going to let uh, Calvin take it away from here and introduce your, your guest. Well, Taylor, she, you're going to present Calvin first, though. And then yes. from there, we're going to go ahead and let him present his guest, okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So uh, U.S. Navy veteran Calvin Poole is the past president of the Tennessee Regional Group of the Blinded Veterans Association, BVA. He is currently the secretary treasurer for the Tennessee Regional Group of the BVA and regional BVA ambassador. He is also the chairman of the BBA for the Golden Age Games. Calvin is co-founder and president of the executive board for the Tri-State Adaptive Sports Association, TASA. The purpose of TASA is to help improve the quality of life for persons who are physically or mentally challenged through adaptive sports. TASA currently offers archery, bowling, golf, golf ball, and tandem cycling. TASA can also provide many adventure sports on demand, such as cornhole, bocce, and beatball. You can contact them at 901-304-7440. And that's his cell. Or go to tasaweb.org. Again, tasaweb.org. Um, so his guests today are Monica Gilmore, um, she will present about her new clothing line for people with sight impairment. 
we have Marlene Davis Lilly, who will present about advocating and filling disability benefits through BDA. We have Ken um, As Asum, I believe. And Asum, long age. Or Asum, I apologize, sir. That's Ken no problem. Asum. You have heard um, a lot worse. <laughs> I want to get it right. Um, <laughs> So Ken is committed to helping his fellow veterans through volunteer leadership roles. He is a past uh, district board director of the Blinded Veterans Association and president of the Blinded Veterans Association Southern California Regional Group and is currently the chair of team at BBA. He chairs Santa Clarita uh, Valley Senior Center, the Advisory Council Veteran Committee and takes pride in organizing and overseeing Veterans Day, Memorial Day and Blinded Veterans Day tribute at the Senior Center. He created a Veterans Health Identification Card Guide. He is also active on the VICE group at the downtown branch of the VA, VA of Greater Los Angeles Healthcare System. His dedication, skills, and knowledge has made um, a difference in the lives of many. And last but not least, we have um, Brian Harris, District Director Two of BBA, who will discuss the happenings in his district. Calvin, take it away. Thank you, Taylor, for that wonderful introduction. And you have pretty much done the work for me. Mm -hmm. uh, the the guests that we have here today are four of um, people that I've met over the years, and I don't want to exclude the most important person in the group is Michelle Harrison. Without her this thing couldn't happen. She's a very hard worker. She works diligently to help keep this um, blinded veteran, helping blinded veteran segment working. And, and to that point, I would like to first introduce our first guest speaker, which is Monica Gilmore. And so that we can get all the wonderful stories and input today, I'd like to pass it over to Monica. Thank you, Monica. Can you hear us, Monica? It's on you. Greetings, everyone. Yes, I was just sharing my screen. Can you guys see my screen on your on your end? Not yet. You want to go ahead and introduce yourself first and yes. then share your screen? Uh-huh. My name is Monica Gilmore. I'm a former um District Director of the Blind, Blinded Veterans Association myself. I am now the business owner of One Vet, One Love, which is a veteran apparel, adaptive or sports apparel company. as located here in Nightdale, North Carolina. So that is my goal and my mission now, as well as continuous advocating for all veterans, um, not just blinded veterans. Okay, great. And you have a website you want to show? Yes. Give me one second. I hit share. Mm -hmm. I got my marketing manager beside me. We're trying to get it together. Be sure and uh, have it open. If you have it minimized and try to share, it won't show. Okay. Or, Monica, you can um, send me the link in the chat and I'll be able to pull it up that way. I'm going to give it to you right now. It's one, the number one. V is in Victor, E is in Egg, T is in Tom, the number one. The letter L, U is in Umbrella, V is in Victor, dot org. One vet, one love, dot org. Okay. So I'm going to do that right now. And I did have it minimized. But... You guys have it up yet? Yeah, it shows now. So this is my business. Um, I take pride in my business um, with giving a way to give back to the veterans. Um, 
a way to give back to the veterans. Somebody has a um a, a delay or do somebody watching on a computer or something in there in the same room? No, I think we got it. Talking to me. Uh I don't know who, but uh I, I got a bunch of noise behind me. I'm trying to keep myself muted, but I heard a Everything you say comes back uh, in an echo. Yeah, it's, it's yeah I heard it too, but I don't hear it any. I don't hear it anymore. Yeah, I know you don't. Okay. You want to tell us a little bit about it as, as you stroll through your presentation? Yeah. So on my website, you will find I do. I was I was sold out. Um, my first week of opening um, due to government contracts that I have now and outside government um, military related businesses. I do have some new apparel coming out um, within the next month by late July, early August for the fall and still some summer um, apparel. But my apparel consists of there is no apparel, athletic apparel out here on the market from no companies such as Nike, Reebok, none of those companies. Most of my apparel have specifications to it to assist those, not just normal veterans with no disabilities, but those that are paraplegic, blind, amputees, um, hearing, um, all, all types of disabilities. Um, so I decided, God gave me the vision to make comfortable athletic wear um, for all types of veterans, even those that deal with certain disabilities. Now, um, this idea also came to me and through uh, participating in a lot of a different adaptive sports, um, which I started adaptive sports through the Blinded Veterans Association, um, getting acquainted with them. And through the process, I also had a chance to learn from other disabled veterans, though those that were amputees, um, blind, hearing loss, and, and different other issues, even with PTSD um, and other issues. And so I decided, I noticed that doing a lot of adaptive sports that they didn't have really comfortable um, athletic wear to wear um, doing, when doing sports, um, even wheelchair basketball. You know, you just have regular basketball shorts. And so asking the different veterans questions about um, issues they face with, you know, with their apparel that they wear just helped me to gain further knowledge of what I wanted to produce, um, for them. And so I went with it. Um, it has taken almost two years, um, for me to collaborate and get everything together, how I, um, exactly wanted the athletic apparel to meet their needs. And so that's what I did. Um, I'm, I'm, I was willing to to take charge and work to get it honed down to exactly what I really wanted. That sounds amazing. Yes, ma'am. What you doing? Congratulations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been in business? I may have missed that. Um, I've been in business since December of 2022, and I'm also um, branded. And not just in the, in the United States, <laughs> I'm also br branded in the UK and Australia. All right, you go, girl. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Okay, and maybe one day you'll come back and share some of your products and and even some of your models. That would be excellent. Yes, absolutely. My website will be consistently changing um, as I go further with my business. I I will eventually have a lot of the veterans that have stood beside me and have encouraged me, such as those that are a lot of them that are on the on this um, platform today. Marlene Davis, who also previously did the, um, the <clears throat> an Appalachian Trail march with me up in the Northern Appalachian Trail. Brian Harris, who has, me and him have done a lot of adaptive sports events together. Um, and Michonne, um, so, and Calvin Poole. So they have definitely been inspiring as well throughout this process. Mm -hmm. That is so wonderful. We're just going to say congratulations. Keep up the good work. 
Even Thank I you. have a similar background. I, forever, I've been in the fashion and cosmetology industry and have made some clothes and designs for individuals with disabilities. So what you're doing is to be commended because right. there's so mm -hmm. much that they need, you know? Right. And also on my website, I have an advocacy part that I'm strong on that has a lot of different organizations. If you go to the resource page, you will mm -hmm. find a lot of different um, organizations that that I have been acquainted with and still keep in contact with. And and for veterans, <laughs> you use those resources where they see fit. So I do have the Tri-State up there, the BVA, and a lot of different other organizations that have been encouraging and inspiring inspiring to um, for me um, in the past. That's what hey, I'm... Love to put your information on our website as well. Yeah. I was just getting ready to ask you what inspired you and in, in, uh, to, to, you know, start the line, the clothing line. Um, just, just seeing, um, and, and it, seeing other disabled veterans struggling with not having proper and comfortable athletic wear when they did adaptive sports. Um, and even for me, I, you know, being a woman, not everything that men wear when I'm, when I kayak or, or when I, um, play golf or go skiing is comfortable for me. So my clothing is, a lot of my clothing is unisex, just like military apparel. Um, small, medium, large sizes. Um, and so I, and I wanted to make them unisex um, because that's what the military did for me when I was in there. Um, there were only certain things that were not, you know, that they had to tailor towards a woman's, a, a woman and a man's physique. Um, and the, and that was fine, but I wanted most of my clothing to be unisex. Mm -hmm. Right. That is so cool. So, so Mark, how difficult was it being a visually impaired veteran and get started in that business? Did you run into any difficulties being visually impaired? Um, you know, yeah, there were little, little difficulties. Um, cause even though we can't see we still have a vision. We can vision. I wasn't born mm -hmm. blind, so I could see before. So I kind of know right. how I wanted the clothing to fit. Um, and asking, I, yeah, I did have to ask men, um, Brian and other uh, veterans that I have dealt with in the past. I would ask them certain things as to how their clothing um, fit them, or what, what I need to hone in on. So that was a difficult part. Um, and then dealing with different disabilities like paraplegies or amputees. Right. Um, Brian is also a blind amputee and an amputee. And so I got a lot of information from him and a few other mm -hmm. amputees in the BVA. They really helped me out a lot. And um, a lot of women too. Yep, a lot That's of the so women. Wonderful. Congratulations yes. and we wish you much success. Thank you. And as I said before, we want to see you come back with some of your models and some of your products so that we can help you on this end. Yes, Push I sure through. will. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. One more question. Yes. Being a being a, a businessman myself, what advice do you have for other disabled veterans going into business for themselves? Just to, you know, you know, give us a brief uh, you know, advice, tip real, you know. My main advice that I would, would that I would tell them is to don't listen to the naysayers. Um, there you go. Trust the process. Mm -hmm. Trust. Well, I trust God. Um, there you go. And so, therefore, you know, I I I can't give up. He didn't give up on me. If he there gave me the vision, I'm going to keep running for it. I don't care how long it it took me, how long it's going to take me, because I haven't arrived yet. This is just the beginning for me, and mm -hmm. for any mm -hmm. entrepreneur. I, I just want to remind them to keep going forth. Um, and the only way to, to shut the naysayers down is to just keep producing. There you go. You there sound you go. right. Yep, you keep sound so carbon copy. <laughs> yep. Because <laughs> you definitely got them out there saying you can't do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's great. Well, we want great. to. Right. I think what you're doing is amazing. Thank Monica, you so can I ask you, uh, Ms. Michonne, can I ask you, um, had you considered taking your adventure out to the show like Shark Tank? No. Um, my next major thing, hopefully will, that'll be cleared soon, is getting my stuff in all the PXs. Um, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So I'm working on that. So hopefully that'll be finished soon. And that wasn't really hard, but yeah, I'm dealing heavily now, not just with individual sales, but with big time contracts. Right. Putting them in stores and stuff, you know? Oh, the country, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Uh, are you looking are you looking for male models? I'm looking for all types of models. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So I if you want to model, definitely I you know, I'll be reaching out to a lot of you guys um okay. at least by September, October, because I'm gonna do a photo shoot and I'll be able to possibly, you know, fly everyone in at the same time and stuff. So be looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Ready. All right now. All right. You go, girl. So proud of you. Thank you so much. Love the good work too. A lot of people, Thank a lot of our uh, disabled veterans, especially those with vision impairment, is really, really needing some fabulous outfits. So you have a lot of sports attire and business attire and what else? Is that about it? Athletic, just athletic wear for just for any type of sport: golf, hiking, basketball, oh, wow. wheelchair, basketball, running, mm -hmm. um, tennis. Um, what else? Tennis, kayaking. Oh, okay, all sports. Yeah, all mm -hmm. sports. Yep. Uh, 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 parachute jumpers, Connie. <laughs> Don't put me in that. <laughs> Depending on what you want to wear when you when you parachute. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's Michelle, not me. I ain't parachute. Tell her, Michelle, we gonna get out there, huh? Oh, heck no. Mm -mm. <laughs> Yeah. All right, well, good job. Good job. You know what? Before you go, uh, tell us uh, how to reach you again. How yeah, yes. please do. Yes, you can reach me at, at on my website, which is onevetonelove.org, or you can me reach me by email, which is one vet, the number one, V E T, the number one, L U V, at gmail.com. Um, my phone number is the same number that the government has online when you Google my name. <laughs> that's the number, <laughs> the only number for me. And I'm not, you know, hey, that's fine. But yeah, my number is 252-822-3486. That's we online need you as well. All you we have need to you repeat that because we, we yeah. also not only on, on Zoom, but we're on YouTube and a lot of other right. podcasts. Yes, well, my, first of all, my, my name is Monica Gilmore. M-O-N-A-C-A. I do not have an I in my first name. Gilmore, G-I-L-M-O-R-E. -E. My website for my business is onevetonelove.org. My email is onevetonelove at gmail.com. Got it. Okay. Right. Keep yeah. up the good work. Thank you, Monica. You are such an inspiration. Yes, she, yes, she is. You Very are. much so. Yeah. Okay, so Taylor, we're moving right along. Well, it's Marlene Davis, Lily, welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to tell us a little bit about Marlene before we turn it over to uh, to Calvin? Yes, ma'am. My name is Marlene Davis, Lily. I am a fourth generation of five generations of U.S. Navy. Uh, yeah, wow, that's amazing. A retired mental health social worker. I went to grad school in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Currently, I am a national service officer for the Blinded Veterans Association, and I am the military chair for my uh, sorority, uh, Zeta Phi Beta Incorporated, here in uh, Arkansas. So, that is so inspiring. We have a few questions. Um, so Marlene, um, what is a VSO? A VSO is a veteran service officer that files claims for veterans against our government for injuries that occurred in service. Hmm. And for those of us that are not veterans, can you kind of explain a little bit more how, what, what that's all about, the VSO? What all do they do? Actually, we do um, pretty much uh, what they call new claims. It, the claim can consist of an injury that occurred in service. It can consist of post-traumatic stress that occurred after service because it starts to 
manifest itself after service. And the mm -hmm. same way with blindness, they can have symptoms in service, but it can manifest itself further once they're out of service and we can file claims for those benefits. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Okay. Uh, Charles, did you have a question for, for Miss Lily? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, um, what, what kind of training did you do um, to become a VSO? What do you have to do to be a VSO, Veteran Service Officer? You know, well, you have to be accredited, for one. Uh, you have to go through the Office of General Counsel to become accredited. But I volunteered as a service officer for 22 years. And I started at a vet center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So I began to be tutelaged under a veteran service officer there who is now in Rockford, Illinois, but he was in Milwaukee at the time, uh, Howard Harris, a great service officer and um, kind of gave me the tools that I need to be where I am today as a service officer. Well, so what kind of challenges do you face being a VSO? Because I know there are some challenges, uh, you know, just knowing of what I've uh, experienced, but I'm not a VSO or NSO, but I mm -hmm. dealt with them. So what are your challenges, you, you know, day to day dealing with different veterans? Well, mm -hmm. you have to understand that I myself am a veteran. So I understand uh, a lot of the things that those veterans have experienced, I have experienced myself. Whether it was homelessness, drug addiction, uh, post-traumatic uh, post traumatic stress, personal assault, mm -hmm. A lot of those issues we have faced ourselves. Right. So we can understand when the veteran comes in and a lot of them, you know, they may not be nice. Their words may not be nice, mm -hmm. but I understand where they are so I can meet them where they are. That is so, so wonderful. God bless what you're doing. And, and you're seeing it on your end. So do you think the claim process has improved? improved? And if so, uh, tell me how and what do you, you know, in your, your, in your eye, from your eyes, from your side, I should say. Do you want me to be honest? Yep. That's okay. what exactly. The, cl the claims process can be improved Absolutely. because we have a multitude of veterans that are not receiving benefits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we hear that all the time. Are yeah, you preaching to the choir now? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. right. So, I'm like, yeah, brain, just tell it like it is, you know. And and yeah. I mean, I know the process is flawed because, you know, I see it. I see the people who complain and I see what they complain about. And I'm one of them. I'm going through it myself. So I understand. I just, you know, you know, coming from your you being a uh, officer yourself, because <clears throat> a lot of times uh, we tend to put out false information and make everything seem like it's all uh, rosy and peachy creamy, but it's not, you know, so that's good, you know. You know, there are mm -hmm. a lot of issues that come up that are not being taken care of or addressed. And of course, I'm gonna say my piece about it because I, I'm a veteran on the same end as, as the veteran. So, mm -hmm. you know, I want someone to do something about it. I don't want them to blow smoke at me because that's mm -hmm. not gonna help the issues. You got people who are living below the poverty level who can't even get their benefits done because nobody takes the time to do it. Yeah, that's so sad. You know, an another population that we've uh, shared information with and had a few on the show were the senior veterans, you know, the ones that kind of don't have any resources, can't get their, their benefits, nor do they have jobs or friends or anything. So. That's a population that's, sorry to say, has kind of been overlooked as well. Well, that population is not being serviced because somebody is not doing their job. Yeah. Because yeah, as a person, as, as a senior, they're eligible for pension benefits. If nothing else, they're eligible for pension. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember, some of them may have been in World War II. Mm -hmm. Some of them may have been in Vietnam and they may not have their records because you have we have veterans that have had special assignments. And that special assignment, they may not be listed to a regular veteran service officer, but there is an office that covers those special assignments. Those records can be found. 
but most often people don't want to go and do that extra step to take care of that. Is that a long process though? Because some of them seem like they just give up. Well, people do give up and I always tell them, whatever you do, don't ever give, give up. You always file an appeal. You never give up. You keep your appeal going because so in your benefit is, is going to come to you. It's going to be retro back to you. Just never give up on your benefit, even if you have to go before the Board of Veteran Appeals mm -hmm. or if you have to take it to the court with, a, with an attorney to the U.S. Supreme Court. If you have to take it there, take it there, but never give up on your benefit. See, that's part of the process problem, too. Uh, you know, some of them, they call, like, before they even get in touch with an NSO or a VSO, and, and they talk to someone, like, at the VA, and the VA, mm -hmm. see those people who are working at the VA are civilians, and, right. and they yeah, take their time, they do whatever they want, you know, they, they sit around, they lollygag, the file sits on their desk for whatever, they take care of that stuff. And so it frustrates these veterans and people get, some people just don't have the patience. And then like you say, they just, they quit. I mean, you, we shouldn't quit, but that happens. It's, it's you know, I, I know it, you know, I see it because, you know. Mm -hmm. See it all the time. Yeah. When, a veteran, when a veteran decides to not quit and they've lost all that other money because they didn't keep the appeal going, mm -hmm. but then they want to go back and get the money, then the VA is, is going to use their law against them not to pay them that back money. Because the law says that you have to keep the appeal going. Mm -hmm. You know, not going to go back. Even I'm not about if they don't, the yeah. VA doesn't like to call errors on themselves. They make errors all the time. At but all they, don't the like, they don't like to call errors on themselves, but I can say that the Blinded Veterans Association, we put them to the test when it comes to them making an error. We're going to use the law for them to fix that error. Well, we and sure need more people like you all out there because mm -hmm. we've heard some stories that just make you make you feel so sorry. You know, mm -hmm. I don't, don't have the, the fortitude to continue on. You know, they've been beat through the system so long, you know. Well, yeah. I can tell you from and my, they don't know people like you. <laughs> well, from my own experience is the reason that I do what I do today, because when I got out of the service, there was nothing in place for women veterans. Right. Uh, there, I was told that women veterans didn't have PTSD or anything like that, that we didn't yeah, we have that. that a lot, too. Yeah. And so for 17 years, uh, I isolated myself. I didn't really? go back. To, yes, ma'am. I didn't go back because I was dealing with blindness. I didn't okay. go back and bother them at all until someone encouraged me to go back to college. And when I did go back, I wind up meeting someone in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And this is a blind veteran who was working in the hospital in Milwaukee VA hospital. He was mm -hmm. the one who encouraged me to finish school and go back and do this job. And he said, if you have to volunteer to do it, just volunteer to do it. And that's what I did. Well, they need more like you and your friend that helped you to, to uh, have the faith to continue on, you know, because the stories that we hear is just so sad, you know, they, and they're living in such horrible situations and conditions as well, you know, so, I mean, that's how Operation Confidence's Veterans Program got started, because here I go skipping along, not knowing that this was going on and ran into an encampment living on the streets of Skid Row. That just broke my heart. You know? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and could... as, as an ambassador, we collect coats and hygiene items and shoes all year long, mm -hmm. just so that we can donate to our hospital in our day treatment center here. Uh, you right. know, this is something that I, I ask people that are my friends, uh, people that are in my community, you know, they have different organization. And I, I tell them that we have to take care of our veterans. And, th yeah, and, this and these veterans do. that I've seen this in this encampment were living out right. in wheelchairs. I mean, that was just Oh, yeah, they are in wheelchairs. Horrible. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes ma'am. You know, I mean, how could, then they fought for our country. That's what just hurt my yes, heart, you know? And, yes, ma'am. And this is what they get kicked out and sat on the street in wheelchairs. You know, no water, no food. That's, no this food. is correct. You can't, this can't is correct. go to the bathroom, but I mean, it's just, uh, just give me chills. So it's been a 
quite a battle for me being not a veteran and a woman of color. Let's be real. <laughs> to <Yeah. give. laughs> Violence. And that's why this is one of the reasons I don't do politics at all because I, I don't be politics either. either. I just want to help them get off the street. Yeah, <laughs> I don't do the politicians telling me this and that. They're, no, because uh -uh. there's, there's too many that yeah. are underserved. So I don't do the yeah. politics portion of it. <clears throat> but um, I do. I coordinate a kayak team as well for our veterans. You know, which is oh. a form of a uh, uh, therapy for them. Um, and it doesn't matter the disability, mm -hmm. you know, we just want to be able to get them out. We do an annual event for kayak for suicide prevention. We do that every September and we really? do. Yes, ma'am, we do. And then we have an event that we're trying to do annually because women don't even know that they have a women veteran day. They don't even know it's June the 12th. Yeah, we've had that on the show. Yeah, and, that's so and, true. And the majority of the women I know don't even know that there's a Women Veteran Day. That's true. That's true. So we do a kayak event for that. And we, since it's only been 75 years that they acknowledge our permanent uh, service, we do, we try to get 75 women out in the water on the kayaks. So what happens when they don't know how to swim? <laughs> Like well, we, we have to make sure that they're able to do self rescue before we can take them out in the water. They just right. no. We have to be. They have to be able to self rescue before they can go out in the water. And not so we do, drowning and stuff. And right. we have volunteers that help us with that. Uh, right. Arkansas has a canoe club, and they volunteer to train the veterans before they can go out. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to be able to self rescue before they can go out. Calvin, weren't you on one of those kayak trips? Yeah, actually, yes. And I'm just about to say they uh they wear uh, life vests when they're in the water. But okay. Marlene and I actually planning to try to do a kayak event here in Memphis next April. So we're working on that now. So mm -hmm. yeah, but she's a yeah, outside of her BSO work, she's an active sports lady as well. So she does That's a lot so of things, fun. yeah. Kayaking and water rafting and well right. and multitude of things, yeah. Well, congratulations, Marlene. I'm so proud of you. And we want so, you to also come back and show some of your videos and pictures. <clears throat> some of I, the do, I think Michelle, Michelle I do have her, her, um, her kayak pictures. Let me see if I can share them now. One moment. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah. Calvin, yes, can you turn closer to what would that be to us? If it's my left to your right, so we can see a little bit better. The other way, I'm sorry. <laughs> There this, you this, go. That's that's okay. where we want. All right, right there. Okay. Right there. Okay. Don't move. I try not to. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what is this screen broadcast thing? Okay. Oh, okay. So the, those are some of the still pictures. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. So they so, get in the, the swimming pool first. I so the did. swimming pool is where they learn to do self-rescue first. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's where they learn to do self-rescue. Okay. My little explain self-rescue to them. Well, self-rescue is that once you're in the water, they actually literally flip you over. Oh Lord. <laughs> kind of say, oh Lord. <laughs> they flip you up and then what else? To make you feel you have to swim, basically. You have to get back in the boat yourself. Oh no. And you push out of the boat, then you have to get back into and the, the boat. And the skirt or yeah. waist. Oh. Once your handle, which literally pushes you out, pushes you out of out of the boat and above the water. Okay. Oh, so kind of you got two choices: <laughs> kayaking <laughs> or, uh, or, or, or or skydiving. Now, which one is what better for you? No, 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 no. I'll just stay right here on the ground and <laughs> do <on> the <laughs> and welcome all these wonderful people. I can. I wish I could, but I just can't. 
All right. Going to the gym with you, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Marlene, can you tell us how to reach you? Yeah, please do. Yes, you can reach me um, through the Blinded Veterans Association website, and I can give you my direct phone number for BVA. It is 202-780-4607, or you can email me at mdavislily at bva.org. And as far as the kayak team, it is 870-413-9406. Can you repeat that for us, please? Just in case yes, people didn't have a pencil or a pen. I am on the Blinded Veterans Association website, and my direct number is 202-780-4607. My email address is mdavislily at bva.org and my kayak email is Central Arkansas Team River Runner. We're on Facebook, Central Arkansas Team River Runner. And my phone number for the kayak team is 870-413-9406. Repeat the phone number one more time because we, we're over a lot of podcasts and sometimes people have, you know, don't have a pen next to them, whatever. For blinded veterans, it's 202-780-4607. And for the Central Arkansas Team River Runner, it is 870-413-9406. Great. Thank you so much. We're going to look forward to you coming back now and sharing yes, more of your, your amazing videos. I'd love to. All right. Thank you. Great. Okay. I want to thank you personally, Marlene, for coming on as well. Thank you so much. Yes, Are you right. welcome, my birthday buddy? <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys work the same day. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, how fun! Okay, well, <laughs> yeah. Calvin's going to be doing this uh, show once a month, huh, Calvin? So you'll be able to bring yeah. bring her back on along oh, for with sure. yeah. Yeah. along with uh, Marlene and other guests. Okay, so we. are Taylor, you want to introduce the next guest or Charles, either one of you? Well, the next guest is um, Team BBA Chairman, Ken. Welcome, Ken. Thank you. I'm pleased to be here. Okay, so he's so, going to... Uh, Ken, what is your... Say it again. Yes. Your what last is your... name? <laughs> A-S-A-M. A -S -A -M. Okay. It's... Awesome Asum. Awesome. Awesome Asum. Oh, that's cute. Okay, awesome yeah. Asum. That's a good way to remember. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell us a little bit about what you do, Mr. Awesome Asum. <laughs> well, I currently wear two different hats. One is Team BVA, and the other is I'm the district director for Southern California, which is Los Angeles, six counties, but mainly largely. Los Angeles County, California. Uh, okay. I'll just say right now for Team BVA, it's in a, a phase of reorganization, and I would prefer to be invited back in September, October to talk about where it's going. Some things are brewing that would be of significant interest to your group. Oh, please do. Okay. Yeah. But, but I'm not at liberty to, to uh, discuss it at this point. Okay, and Calvin may have told you we need you also on our team, but we're done <laughs> with Calvin. So we'll talk about that later for our veterans and their housing project. Our housing. Well, Go then, ahead. Uh, then start. my other hat is that I'm the blind veteran, or I'm the president of the Blind Veterans Association of Southern California. I got that position in uh, November of 2019 when both the Sec Secretary Treasurer and the President decided they wanted to retire, and guess what? I inherited the whole ball of wax. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> okay, well they knew you were, was a man for, that could do the job. So congratulations. Okay, so some of the areas that I have placed emphasis on. One, as mentioned in my biography, was that I wrote a, a brochure that I pass out. Uh, 
on why you should get your VA medical ID card. Because only about 20% of the veterans actually have a veteran's medical ID card, as I've been told. And I believe that's right, because when I'm out in public and I meet veterans, that's about the percentage I run into that have cards versus those who don't have a card. Can you tell us what that card is? It's about because we've heard heard that before, but maybe you can tell us a little bit more. Well, it's issued by the VA. You can you can apply online. That's how I did. I was told I was asked when I first went had a visual problem, which was about six years ago. Uh, a, per, a golf buddy that I had gotten to know said, "Are you you veteran? Yes, and you have your medical ID card." I said, "No." He said, "You need to get it." So I came home and I did it online. You can do, just go to va.org and you can apply for a medical ID card online. You have to have the medical ID card in order to get the benefits of the VA medical system. And, mm -hmm. and I've got, you know, you hear all, and I never bothered about it. I have a daughter who is a trauma nurse and she gets me, dad, you need to get your VA card. And I said, I had enough of that when I was in service. And I heard all the horror stories and I just stayed away from it. But one of the best things I ever did was get my VA medical card. And the benefits that I've gained, I get thousands of dollars a year, multi-thousand dollars a year in benefits from the VA as it relates to my visual impairment. Really? Oh, it's That's huge. something good to know. Including that... the television that I'm using right now. <laughs> hmm. and so I got a 27 inch television on my uh, desk here that's but ju just um just a lot of things and then the yeah, there's a blind rehab centers there's I think 16 of them in the country one of them's in Long Beach California and it was life-changing to have gone to the blind veterans uh, rehabilitation center you go I was signed up for three weeks I was there or they extended me a week while I was there. I mm -hmm. heard one person had been there like 49 weeks and decided he'd better go home before he gets divorced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, go, you get a private room, private bath, three squares a day, and, and the snacks are like a meal unto themselves. <laughs> they really? want snacks in addition. Yeah. And then I, I would get up at 6.30 in the morning and you, they give you a schedule each day and you say, well, what do I do with all the extra time? I'm going to tell you, there are there is no extra time. I started mm -hmm. at 6.30 in the morning and I went to 7.30 at night. And then I, <laughs> then you just get a moment to breathe before you uh, start all over again. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, but, exciting. Was, but as I say, it was life changing what you're exposed to when you go to it. In a positive way. I don't say that in a negative way. I say that in a very positive way. And they're very right. professional. A staff that would is really devoted to their work and very enthusiastic about helping you. It was, it was just an absolute wonderful experience. Okay. So, so anyway, so you get your vet, a veterans ID card, medical ID card. You can apply can you repeat? Online. Can you repeat where that wonderful place was that you? Well, it's the... really hard. BB or uh, uh, not BB, but the the website. No, what you said where they gave the the wonderful meals and all the activities. Oh, that the Blinded Veterans uh, Rehab Center. And that's located where? Well, there's 16 of them in the country. The one that I <laughs> went to is in Long Beach, California. Oh, okay. Just south of LA. Okay, you know about that, Charles? I don't know about the center, but I know about the. Uh, Long Beach is, uh, you know, has a VA, so, you know. Long Beach is, they have a huge hospital there. It used to be a Navy Absolutely. hospital and it's been converted to a veterans hospital. They keep adding and adding to it. Adding on it right now, yep. Yep, mm -hmm. they are. They're, they're about done with an absolutely huge addition. I walked around the perimeter of their property one day. It's two miles. It's a two-mile mm -hmm. walk around the perimeter. Yeah, Charles is on the board for Paralyzed Veterans of America. And, and, our office and their office there. is in there. Yes. Mm -hmm. now, now, I'm going to bring up one thing that you talk about. Uh, you say, uh, get your veteran, 
your military, your medical ID card, but you only get that if you have benefits. And so, no, oh, you get that if you are a vet. You only have to have like thirty days active duty. I know, but you, that's the process that we were talking about earlier, where people get denied or they give up or they, you know, things like that. And then, and see, I mean, it's no, not. This, this is different from getting disability processing a disability claim. The uh -huh. VA medical card is a benefit unto itself. You go online. You can go online and apply it, or you can go to a medical or a VA center and apply in person. And it took about two weeks to get it applied. They called me. They asked me a couple simple questions to finish up the application. They mailed me a letter. The hardest part about getting my medical ID card was the camera was broken at the VA center. It took them three months to get it fixed. Okay. But you could <laughs> use the letter to get services. You didn't have to have the card. The letter would serve as services. I just say that as kind of a yeah. comic relief point of view. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. but, hey, hey, Ken, I heard you mention about the blind rehab centers and prosthetics. I understand that you wrote a pamphlet as well for the ORCAM uh, yeah, system. I did. Yeah. I, that, this is separate from, from going to the blind rehab center. Uh, when I first got involved, what I got, I'm very active also in what it's called the VIST program, Visually Impaired <laughs> Services, which is a right. sub, sub part of the VA. And uh, I went, again, my friend dragged me to a, a meeting and I went in and the first presentation I ever heard was, was ORCAM. And the VIST coordinator says, if you're interested, give me a call. So the next day I called him. And he says, well, you have to come down and be screened. I went down, screened, passed the screening, and they gave me an ORCAM. And, but the manual really lacked in uh, being able to teach you how to use it. So now they have improved it a lot, and they have now also added, uh, they've also added a lot of YouTube videos that help you use the ORCAM much better than they did in the past, but nevertheless, at the point that I got involved, the man, their manual left a lot to be desired. One of my, part of my military service, which I was in the Air Force, uh, I was a technical instructor. They put me through instructor school and they taught me how to write lesson plans and how to teach and so on. So I mm -hmm. used that lesson plan method, methodology and I wrote this manual for the ORCAM, gave it to the VA. I felt I owed them something for what they have done for me. And then I was told later that it was accepted as the training manual for the ORCAM by the VA. I hate to stop you, Ken, but for our sighted listeners that may not know what the ORCAM is, could you explain what the ORCAM is, please? ORCAM is, oh, oh, you're going to get me on a hot subject here. <laughs> <laughs> they use artificial intelligence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you hear all the negative about artificial intelligence uh -oh. in the news now. I uh -oh. wish they would do an article on the positive sides of artificial intelligence. ORCAM is, not, is one of those. And there is another product on the market called Envision Glasses. They both use artificial intelligence and they are. There are devices that you wear, the ORCAM clips by a magnet onto the side of your glasses. It has a camera and, and it, it will read to you and uh, it will identify people, identify money. If you go into a store, you read the barcode on a product, it will tell you all about that product. If that product's missing, you can teach it an additional product. You, if you, when you meet, you have somebody you wanna remember, you take their mm -hmm. picture, put their ID on it. It will remember that person. The next time you see them, they'll tell you who's standing in front of you. Oh and my gosh. Excuse me? That's amazing. Yeah, well, that and the Envision Glasses, the two, they're competitive products now on the market. I have, I work with the ORCAM. I was very involved with the ORCAM. And then all of a sudden, within about two months, everybody I knew left the company. Uh oh. <laughs> so I said, well, and then about then I met, found this Envision glasses, 
And I think Envision Glasses has more advantages than the Orcam. Both, both very strong products for the visually impaired and blinded community. Uh, and I won't go into the different, that's another whole subject going into, just going deep okay. into those products is a subject unto itself. <laughs> <laughs> but with ours, I did before the VA in Los Angeles would approve supplying the envision glasses, I volunteered to be, I in quote, guinea pig for the VA. And I did some research and development work for the VA with the envision glasses. So I'm, I'm very familiar with both products. But well, we the, need you to come back. Uh, well, I'll just, just awesome. tell me what, just be, just be, tell me when to be here. And <laughs> well, we, yeah, because you have, and we need to see some of the, some of the equipment that you're talking about. If you have a video or something that shows, that would be well, fun. I mean, you also go to the websites for both products and see them on there. But well, we want to show our audience, of course. So well, we're going well, to need, gonna need yeah. you to come back and do that. Well, just here's. These are the Envision glasses right here. Oh, and they have my own lenses in it. It has a camera and the speakers in the back of the, here is, you can hear it speak or you can Bluetooth it to any device. And it has a plug in here, a standard USB power cord will charge it. And uh, yeah, it's just, and I wear these all, I can wear, they're extremely comfortable. There's times I actually have to reach up and touch it to see if I have this on or my regular glasses. That's how comfortable they are. You have to have some vision though for, for that to work, no, right? No, or not? In my case, no. well, it's tailored to what, no. what you need. And in this case, you I don't have some tell. vision. No, you I don't have, have to have sight. You can be you can, you can uh, can very, the blind, yeah. You can get it without the lenses. You get a wire mm -hmm. frame where all, all you have is the or or the envision the device on the on the arm here is where it is, it's on the arm of the glasses. And uh, it's talking and to me right now. With the vision glasses, you can see. What's that? With the vision glasses, you have sight. Yep. Well, you can you, you can get, you use in vision glasses either case, blind, total blindness or, mm -hmm. or with vision, it can be tailored, adjusted to your needs. Wow. See, there's something else we learned. Okay, yeah. well, please come back with more information on that. And of course, the, your your uh, chapter so we can know, especially you say you have some new um, upcoming, not events, but new programs coming to that, to your, to your can't talk about it yet. Can't huh? it. We can't disclose it yet. Yeah. No, I understand that. I'm saying yeah. come so back. So I'll come back. I'll come back in a little day. Just let me know what, when you want me to show up. Yeah, uh -huh. you said it in October. Kelvin right? knows how to get a hold of me. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, come back later. You've got my then. number. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Calvin. You have anything you want to say oh, before we I, move I would like on to, to add our a couple next year? Conclusion. Can I just look sure. in? Okay, one of the things that I really push, and this comes from some of my business background is getting out to events. Last year, we did 12 events. Uh, I had a board of directors who wanted me to get approval for every event, even if it wasn't gonna cost them a dime, they wanted to approve it before I went. So we played their game. And we went to 12 events last year. The poster you see behind me or the background behind me is part of a poster that I use in my displays. Mm. But I think in order to make an organization grow, you have to get out in front of people. You've got to let them know you exist. That's mm -hmm. right. And that's one of my strongest pushing points. That's so true. So, we so want how to do they get in? Yeah, before. Yeah, how we get in touch with you? Yes, absolutely. Okay. My phone number is, this is my cell phone, 317-441-7849. I don't answer if I don't recognize the number so leave me a message and i'll call you back text message right excuse me a text message right because well, you can do you either out. one either text or voice. <clears throat> either one i'll i'll eventually get to it <laughs> you get all those robo calls like i do oh I yeah I, that's why i don't particularly answer them but anyway 
that's why if I don't ever identify, see the number or I don't know what the number is, I tend to not answer it. I've got you. Although lately I've been more gutsy about it because I have made so many out, outside contacts that I um, don't want to miss them. Yeah, right. right. Okay. So that, and then my email. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Email is this is one word lowercase Ken K E N ASAM A S A M 42 at yahoo.com. Hey. Ken, Ken K E N ASAM A S A M 42 at yahoo.com. Thank you so much. That was so informative. We look forward to having you back. Calvin set up when when it's a good time for you and mm -hmm. some information. And the subject. <laughs> Let's narrow the subject down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's yes. so and cool. I and, the, and um kind of the main reason I invited Ken to see to that Southern California area. I thought it'd be a good uh, resource. Oh yeah, for of, sure. Kind of connect out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That'd be excellent. Yeah, I definitely want to have his support and and uh, encouragement on what what to go do next. Okay, and yeah, that okay. sounds great though. Okay, so uh, before we're going to move on, Calvin, you going well? Actually, Charles, well, introduce we have Brian and uh, yeah, no, I'm yeah, just I'm just what I'm saying is too quick, girl. <laughs> See, Charles, introduce, introduce Brian for me. Oh, uh, that's what uh, Taylor was getting ready to do. Uh, go ahead. Well, go ahead, Taylor. I had you down to introduce him, but go oh, ahead. Taylor, go ahead. You know, you got it. You got it, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Um, Brian Harris, he is going to speak about being a BBA director. Welcome, Brian, and thank you for waiting. Yeah. Well, thank you guys again for having me. Our pleasure. Mm -hmm. So, um, what inspired you to embrace the role as um, the district director for BBA? Well, um, before I was a district director, I was a vice president of the Illinois Regional Group. Um, and as a vice president of a regional group, um, I was in association um, with Monica Gilmore, our first representative, um, and she was a district director at times. Um, with her mentorship and her motivation, um, she inspired me to be a district director where I serve as we speak. Mm -hmm. And what all, uh, what all that you're the, being a district director, what all do you do? Um, I have 11 regional groups, so I cover over 35% of the you know, United States, um, and I have 17 states that I cover. Um, I oversee and supervise the activities of the regional groups. Um, I have about approximately 1,500 blinded veterans in my district. Um, I'm a single father. Um, I am a PVA advocate as well. Um, I do a bunch of recreational activities. So um, my time is is pretty... Um, pretty full. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> no, that is so, that's so wonderful, though. We want, that's just amazing. You know, this actually, this group tells shows everyone it don't let just because you're visually impaired or blind, that just doesn't, that won't stop you. These, these gentlemen and these, and these amazing women are doing some fantastic things. We're so proud and happy to have you on board. But tell well, us more, Charles. Do you have any questions you need? Yeah, I got a question for you. Uh, knowing that you are the, you know, and you say you have a lot of people under, up under you, uh, what's your biggest challenge just being a district di director? Yeah. Um, the biggest challenge that I have is convincing people um, to not use the word disability. And I know it exists, but the key word to disability is disabled. Um, you know, I strive to help and as all of these people, um, the guest speakers and um, the other host and Calvin and Rashawn, um, if I haven't been on events with them, but we have talked about business and how to help other individuals overcome their 
issues, um, so to say. Um, I go to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania every year about July or August to help children with issues because I don't like to say the word disability because um, that's not what we're trying to um, advocate. Right. Um, I think the most challenging is I think I don't have enough time in the day to reach everybody that I want to reach. So, so that's kind of like the uh, um, uh, the 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 pros and the cons, which is another question. <laughs> what are the pros and the cons? And and absolutely, you know, I see one of them is just not enough time. Huh? You know, is that like the biggest factor for you? Um, being a, a uh, you know one of the big big cons of it, you know. But uh, of course, you can tell us all the good things that that, that happens. Um, well, us- um, like my um, mentors, they taught me how to mentor, motivate, and educate. Um, so if you can reach one, you can teach one, and that one can teach mm-hmm. two others. So. Um, it's not about that. It's letting people know that just because you have an injury, um, there is other ways to overcome the injury. As Monica told you, I am a totally blind and below knee amputee. Um, mm-hmm. And people wouldn't know that I kayak the Grand Canyon and, you know, I skydive and I kayak and I scuba dive, I turkey hunt, I deer hunt and <laughs> rock climbing, you know, things of that sort because they'd be like, oh, well, you can't see it, or you know, you 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 know, you're you're losing a limb. How can you do that? You know, um, yeah. you know, most people don't understand if you keep saying I can't, I can't, right? I can't, you limit yourself because you're convincing yourself that you can't do it. That's you know, right. and what we do as blinded vets, you know, and you know, try to be leaders and guiders to tell people. They can, you know, you can do what you want to. And I want to say thank you um, for having me. Um, I want to thank um, Miss Marlene um, Lilly because she um, helped one of my um, advocates from Wisconsin. Um, he's been fighting his disability, well, his injuries um, and with the VA for over 20 years and he was proud to tell me, oh, well, when you see Miss Lily, tell her, thank you so very much for my, you know, mm-hmm. my, uh, yeah, because, you know, if it's not for people like us, you know, these people would have no motivation. They would just stop, you know, and, yeah, right. and that's where we're trying to prevent, you know, and, you know, Miss Gilmore with her apparel wear, you know, it, it, like she said, it is apparel that we can't wear. You know, mm-hmm. that we need to be comfortable with. And, you know, to her accolades, you know, we have a whole lot of naysayers. And then when you actually show them what you can do, you know, mm-hmm. that speaks for itself. It speaks for right. them. Well, Mr. Mr. Sam, you know, he's um, under um, Team BBA. Um, I've been under um, the umbrella of that, you know, program. Um, being, you know, doing my adaptive sports, you know, um, you know, it, it, it takes a whole lot. I like it, it's, it's very time consuming, but, you know, if we put in the effort, we get more out of it than we think we can. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it's wonderful. I mean, well, I'm so inspired and I know our audience is, well, you, this is being shown throughout the United States and I'm assuming some parts of the world and I'm quite sure that it's inspired so many people. I'm just thrilled. Calvin, I'll see you half of you. That's your something up in front of your camera. This is thumb. That looks like your thumb. That's my thumb. <laughs> somebody else. Oh, somebody see my thumb. Okay, yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. so um Ryan, um being, uh, you know, that you say, you know, you already have a, a, a challenges. <laughs> Do you have any inspiration to hold a higher office in the BBA? Um, at this time, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, I'm comfortable. Um, it's not that I don't 
want to hold a higher position. You know, being a single father, like I said, the time constraints, mm -hmm. it takes away, you know, from being the overall father that I could be. You know, I, it's like I limit my time with my son. And it's sometimes he come to these events with me, but, you know, it's, I, I feel like I'm helping in one sense and hurting the other sense, if that makes any sense. Yeah. It makes sense. I commend you for being a single dad. How old is your son? He is 16, ma'am. Oh, that's that age. Huh? Yeah, that, and, and, and that's why I said it's time for me to... <laughs> Yeah. You got to be on top of it. You can't go you just to stay close, yeah. yeah. That's right. Bring him with you. <laughs> yeah, ma'am. Yeah, I have sons too, and it was, you know, it, we had a lot of fun, but they kind of called me the mother police. I raised them as a single mom, but <laughs> I was everywhere, popped up everywhere. But you have to, you know, yes, boys can be easily led in another direction, you know. <laughs> and I had an amazing father, so I kind of knew what to do on raising them sons. I wanted them in his image, but. I do know what you're going through, and I really want to thank you so much. Now, you're going to come back for some more information, too, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. Because this is going to be the regular for Calvin, so we want to have all of you back on. And so, so, so did, you stuff. Did, did, did. I'm sorry, go ahead, child. So you went to uh, you went to Capitol Hill. Oh yeah, we went to, we went to Capitol. Hill. Yes, I yeah. did, and that was a very unique experience to me. Um, Michelle was there, um, and, and you know it was one of those um forever changing moments. I mean, you see it on TV, but to actually see it um head on is um an amazing event because I never known that everything didn't stop at three buildings. There okay. is a variety of buildings and, you know, there is an underground, um, I want to say tunnel that leads from mm -hmm. one building to another building. It's like, oh my God, you never, it, it took us a week and four of those days out of the week, we just walked from one, mm -hmm. one office to another office, from one building to another building. But, you know, to see um, the testimonies of other associations um, speak on the behalf of their veterans and to see the participation of the veterans, even if they were in wheelchairs or, you know, um, just um, an affiliate of the um, program was breathtaking. It was mind blowing, you know, because, you know, they, they represented with their t-shirts or their canes or their wheelchairs, you know, and most of a couple of the organizations I know, like the Wounded Warriors, um, the Paralyzed Veterans Association, where I'm an advocate and an affiliate. So, um, it, you know, it, it was it was amazing to see how many friends that I've known that was not BVA members that were, you know, speaking up, you know, for their association. Yeah. I, uh, and how long ago was that that you were there? Um, it was it was March, ma'am. Just this last March. Oh wow! That's yes, ma'am. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm uh, uh I'm on the board of uh the PVA in Long Beach, and next year in '24, uh, we're gonna have another trip to DC, and they already pushed me to to do it, which I'm fine because you know I'm a real advocate. I don't get up and say the politically uh, uh sound. <laughs> I get up and tell the truth. Yeah. I say. This yeah, is right, right. that's hell, you know. That's me, you know. I'm like, yeah, right. I, I don't want, I don't want to come up here and sugarcoat anything. I want, you guys have failed as a Congress. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, that's the real thing because because when you go up there and sugarcoat it, then you go back. Oh, it sounded good, you know. What yeah. what's the purpose? You know, I'm not in it to 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 look good. I'm in it to tell the truth. But you know what? That is the very truth, um, because you have these people that have this whole seven minute um, essay that they wrote down. And they're reading it hand by hand, uh -huh. line by line, and you, uh -huh. you, you, you know, if it's the truth, it's going to ring, and you, you know, you don't have to read it verbatim because the truth is breathtaking by itself. You know, yeah. people can relate to the truth. You know, um, you can have a 17-minute speech 
and not talk about anything, or you can have a two minute yeah. speech that rings a volume. You see what I'm there saying? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it does. And you know, I've spoken in a lot of places and, and even like funerals and stuff. And I always tell people I don't write speeches. You know, I sometimes yeah. I grow up without a speech. You know, you got 15 mm -hmm. minutes and I know what I, and I base my stuff like on things that I associate with all the time. And for me, it's easy to talk about that. Exactly. I'm trying to I'm read not, a script. Yeah. No, I don't want to read a script. You yeah. Know, I was the same way. You people I, forgot everything on there anyway. <laughs> I know, you know. So Stand up for an audience, you know. All I got to do is say, this is what I need to talk about. And right. Go. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the anyway, same way. Not to take over your segment. That's so wonderful, though, Mr. <laughs> no, you're, you're fine. You're, you're fine. fine. You're yeah. a hero, too. So, so how do people get in touch with you now? Right. Um, They can email me. My email address is bharris at bva.org. It is Bravo, Hotel, Alpha, Romeo, Romeo, Indigo, Sierra, at Bravo, Victor, Alpha, dot Oscar Romeo Golf. And my phone number is 708-638-4323. Hey, well, we have the Blind Veterans Association on our website. And we're definitely under that. Uh, we would love to add all of these wonderful, wonderful guests and your contact information. And that's under Calvin's uh, page. Calvin, you, you, you tell me you have a page on the website? I may have. I may have forgot to mention it to some of them. But well, we have a phenomenal <laughs> resource page. We want to make sure that they're on the resource page under, okay. under your uh, organization. Well, I thank you so much, Mr. Harris. We sort of winding down, and we look forward for you coming on again as well. Your hands are full. You got a lot going on, too, so mm -hmm. you got to share that with us. Kevin, yes, you got anything you want to add to this outstanding just, group of people? I just want to thank the uh, guest that was on the, sh the show today, of Blinded Veterans, helping Blinded Veterans. is truly our moniker of helping each other. And I want to continue to encourage them to let's keep working as a team. All and right. Like, like I mentioned yeah. earlier, the lady in the background, Michonne, do you want to say anything? Yeah, well, Michonne. Michelle, yeah, no, right <laughs> I'm, I'm right here. I just want to echo what Calvin said. And I wanted to also just let everybody know I wouldn't be here in the position that I am today without the um, mentorship from Monica and um, mm -hmm. Marlene um, mm -hmm. as a female veteran, as an MST survivor. Um, they they kind of took me under their wings and kept me going and, and, and told me that I could do it. And I yeah, can tell... From when I, where mm -hmm. I started and from where I'm at now, I've really grown. And then just getting to, to know um, Brian and, and Marlene and Calvin, all of us in our kayak and all the adaptive sports things we do. And I've challenged Brian. I'm working on my Eskimo role. That's my other thing is to be able to roll the kayak. And what I haven't got there yet. Michelle, it's when you're Michelle, in are you going to show yourself? Show, you, show your face. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know it went off. Um, <laughs> hold on. Yeah. There we go. There you go. Um, the Eskimo mm -hmm. roll is when you're in your kayak and you actually roll it over and come back up. Uh, you go uh, over. And Brian can actually do that. And he he was an inspiration because it takes a lot of core strength and your leg strength. And he, like you said, he's a below the knee amputee. Oh, and, uh, and so I have been telling Brian each time I go out that I've been getting there, but I'm not there yet. And that's on my bucket list to be able to roll. So oh, um, they, please they have come back, me. Brian, and and Michelle and show those videos. That's yeah. Cool. So what happened? All of, the, each of them on this the call have challenged me in different ways, mentally, emotionally, physically. And I just want to thank them. And I'm so glad to be a part of the organization. Oh, That's good. Yeah. So what you, do, what you do, you went to roll and you just feel like in the water part and you just had to get out and... and, and, I, and I can't get myself back up to roll and right. come back up. It takes, it's coordination. It takes a lot of different things you have to do right. with your, mm -hmm. path, your strength Good. and I end up having to pull out I get under the water and I can't get back up so I have to pull out of my kayak and that's, swim what I, that's what I was just yeah exactly that's what I figured yeah. mm -hmm. I wonder who that sound like and I do want to thank you and Charles and 
tailor for your sisters and provide a new segment for us. It's, oh, it's, it's great. Yeah, I think it's an excellent it's thing for us here. Oh, mm -hmm. God, it's absolutely wonderful, breathtaking yeah. on what you all are doing. You know, it's so inspirational. Because you know what, when you say blinded veterans or blinded individuals, period, they think that's it, you know, not that you can do anything else. You know, we do have uh, Richard Cook that's also blind, and he does some amazing things. No, well, he's visually mm -hmm. impaired, though. He's not blind. Yeah. But, but uh, blindness don't, it's blindness don't define who we are. That's the well, that's thing. true. That's exactly that's right. right. Because some people, I have to say, some people think that it's a death sentence, and I always yeah. remind you know, mm -hmm. we are blind, but not dead. That's right. And, and you've <laughs> shown, that, you've shown not... that today. I mean, just mm -hmm. endless positions and activities and fortitude and encouragement. I mean, I can go on and on. I think it's just and, wonderful. And the best is yet to come. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. I want to go be involved with that, too, with you guys. I'm not gone. But <laughs> sometimes I have to put <laughs> thick glasses on. It's just <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I'm looking at. Oh, look at the so yeah. you you can include me too, you know. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. Now you have to let us know when you're coming on, girlfriend, because you just pop up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we want to have some and some of what you're doing. I see you on Facebook everywhere doing all kind of stuff. <laughs> so we want to show our audience that. And uh, we just thank you so much. Mr. Harris, this, you did give your contact information as well. And I yes, think everybody did, right? Yes, okay. ma'am. So we're getting ready to wind it down here. Taylor, you want to give us a short presentation? And, and uh, Charles, you want to wind it down with some of your funny stuff? I think you'll have to give your uh, segment next week. Yes, ma'am. So I'm um, operation. Um, Operation Confidence, um, Combat Boots and Lace. Um, it's a 10, a 10 week empower a 10 week program empowering women veterans and active duty service members through beauty <laughs> and style. And so I'm going to share um the flyer. It's listed. Nope, it's not. Yeah, we have an amazing program that's kicked off here. Uh and so this is uh, kind of a brief overview of what um, the program will entail, dress for success opportunities um, and all things with that, adaptive grooming. Um, I'm kind of fast. Possibly, oh, sorry, I'm trying to get everything in there. Um, adaptive <laughs> grooming devices, um, then there is a fashion show or we've had fashion shows and our beloved angel, Ani. I think I was in a fashion show, wasn't I, Connie? You were in several or shows. Or something like that. I was yeah. in something. Mm-hmm. You were in several of them here recently, remember? The one at the, the <laughs> Nova. Mm -hmm. So Taylor, what, yeah. what's, what's the adaptive grooming, Taylor? What is that? Adaptive well, grooming. Back later, so. Oopsie. Um, so. Adaptive grooming, you know, um, adaptive um, body scrubbing capra or apparatuses. Um, so if you need to scrub your back, body care long handle comb or okay. body care scrubbers, um, body care long handle combs and brushes that are great for people with limited um, arm or hand. Range of motion. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They're assisted devices to um, help individuals put on their their um, jackets, um, hands-free hair dryer stand. I honestly need that one. Um, <laughs> large weighted universal <clears throat> holders for like your toothbrushes or disposable razors, um, razor extension handles, but obviously be very careful um, with using any of those things. Um, yeah, just a lot of good stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of awesome things that um, we'll touch on um, within that group. Mm -hmm. Just getting them ready to feel pretty, of course, and go out and yeah. take them the world. Of course, of course. Just getting that confidence and you know that right. you, your that's you what know, physical limitations, all about. you know, doesn't negate how far you want to go in right. your altitude. So yeah, 
That's what we're going to be doing. And what you've been doing is just outstanding, too. Miss Wheelchair, uh, what year is that, 17? Yeah. And she's so modest, though. She's a phenomenal position with the, uh, it was Air Force Base. What is your position there, Taylor? I'm a program assistant slash. Speak a little louder. You're a little bit. Oh, sorry. I'm a program assistant and then slash um, behavioral health um, therapist. Mm -hmm. So I work with airmen, you know, going through like PTSD, MDD, anxiety, stress, and provide treatment for them. Right. And it's been very interesting, like very interesting and rewarding. Yeah, it is. She's going for her. How long master's. before you get your master's degree? Uh, I will be graduating May 2024. See you there. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank yeah, we're so proud of her. She's been Thank right you. there. That's why she's my baby girl. Baby girl. <laughs> yeah, you hate to say that, but my baby girl. <laughs> I'm a mother from I'm mother from another mother. She my child. <laughs> Whatever, however you say that, but she's my baby girl. <laughs> I'm with us forever, you know. I mean, when she was itty bitty, I'm Charles. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, so we're gonna start winding down today and we just gonna thank everyone. Are you gonna do one of your little funny skits before we leave out? We're gonna show the uh combat boots and lace video, you know, kind of you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. just real quick there. Let's see here. One of the many programs that we're uh, involved in, Operation Confidence, is actually literally created. So uh, we're winding down now. Charles, you have to eat a funny skit, I believe, next week. Okay. We who, Charles, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm trying to stop the video. Hold on a second. Yeah. Say it again. Never mind. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I got a. <coughs> One of the the classics, you know the. Um, <laughs> you know, I like to do this animal humor for all the radio people. It's like oh, okay. this okay. is the one with. This is the one where the the cat slapped the dog, and the dog was like, uh, you know. So the, of course, there's a lot of uh, uh, voiceovers, but uh, I'm gonna show you that one. I, that that you know, it's been a while since we laughed at that. So. Uh, <laughs> Let's see here. Hey, what you do? You fell asleep in your kitty litter? You probably need to go take a bath. <gasps> no, you did not. No. I know you did. Oh, no, you didn't open up a can of worms. I watched. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, I can't believe you put your balls over there. Boy, you in trouble. You in so much trouble. Wait till I start running. I'm going to whoop you. I'm going to whoop you, man. I can't believe you put your balls over there. I can't believe you slapped me. <laughs> <laughs> he always puts something like that on, on before we leave off. It's so funny. Okay, so Taylor, sign us on out, girlfriend. Before we close the show, we would like to encourage our viewers and listeners to visit the Operation Confidence resource page on our website for some amazing resources. Also, we would like to inform everyone about Operation Confidence Positive Redirection Team. It's a group of male and female veterans who are mentors, having overcome similar challenges and situations transitioning back into mainstream society. To be connected or become a team member, email us at info at operationconfidence.org. Again, info at operationconfidence.org.
And as always, we want to remind our viewers and our listeners that our goal for the show is to raise awareness about Operation Confidence's mission, which is to provide stable housing with a wide range of supportive services. So we really need your help. So to get involved, please email us at info at operationconfidence.org or visit our website at www.operationconfidence.org. And we want to ask our viewers and listeners, please to subscribe to our American Visible Heroes um, YouTube channel. And to date, we have over 140,000 views. That is so amazing when we just out here just doing the do, you know. Okay, and then last but not least, in closing, we want to let our, all our viewers and listeners know that Operation Confidence is streaming, uh, our American Visible Heat is streaming on Spotify, Apple, Google God Podcast, Amazon, uh, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and we have our own uh, Instagram, and of course, our Operation Confidence blog. So we get in there. So in closing, we want to end with our video, and we're just going to tell our guest who was absolutely wonderful for the show. We look forward to you coming back. And uh, you're going to sign us on out, Charles? You're muted. I'm having uh, technical issues. Hold on. Not no technical issues. <laughs> but Calvin, <laughs> while he's untechnically technical yes, issues. <laughs> 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 it was, Give us some closing remarks with you, you and your guests. Well, like I want to keep reiterating, I just genuinely want to thank all the guests that participate today. I think they were outstanding. Oh, God, I look, yeah. forward, I look forward to working with them far into the future. And if there's anything that I could do to move this thing along, please let me know. Um, those who want to have those barriers like sight impairment, does not define us. So let's just keep working as a team and let's uh, make BBA the best it can be. It is already. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> you, you all are just doing some things that a lot of people never knew, you know, so mm -hmm. I'm thrilled. So when you come back next week, you can have your, these amazing guests or some new ones added. I'm sorry, next month or some new ones added. Okay. okay. Uh, Charles, you sign this up now? You muted again. You have a technical difficulty? I'm ready, I'm ready now. I'm ready now. I'm good. All right. You know, but yep, we are out of here today. See you next week. And, uh, you know, stuff happened. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I always go with the if the Super Bowl gets uh, had a 30 minute blackout and they make billions of dollars, then you know everybody right. low yeah, allowed to have technical problems. So I'm gonna <laughs> share this and then we're gonna get out of here. Okay, thank you. Thank you again. Thank you so much. All right. Good night. Uh -oh.